amazing success of Hindu goddess NFT launch. Armin, take it away. Oh, no, it's just I thought you're going to give us a summary before we go there. Yeah, so so what we did was we put on the goddess Kalima on OpenSea to um, sell 10 NFTs of goddess Kalima on the um, Polygon blockchain. Um, and I don't, I didn't know how that's going to go. Um, I gave it 28 days for all 10 of them to be sold out and they all sold out within less than a week, not even. So that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so just for, for people who know, this was our way of making sure that, um, Callie gets back on Twitter and on the blockchain so that she's undeletable and forever minted um, on a blockchain so that way because the interesting thing is that a lot of people were uh, a lot of people from india a lot of uh, hindutva were trying to make sure that this doesn't make it out there right so this is why they they send a, a, a hindu it cell against us they came up with fir against us they they made police reports against us uh, they even took um, Sexy Cali all the way to the India Supreme Court trying to shut down social media because they considered our drawing of Hindu goddess Kalima to be blasphemous and so insensitive that they went and did everything they could to make sure it doesn't spread across the internet, okay? And they failed because the more they, they the more the backlash against us was there, the more news coverage that this got and the more um, Hen Sexy Cali got into you know more people were exposed to it right so now uh, but uh, but they banned me from twitter because of this they banned susanna twitter just because of this because you know we didn't violate any of twitter's uh, community guidelines but we got blocked we lost me and susanna lost our twitter accounts and a lot of other people also lost their twitter accounts simply for uh, posting pictures of sexy cali um because they took advantage of loopholes on um, twitter's uh, reporting system and people were being banned left and right simply for posting uh, pictures of sexy Kelly, even though this doesn't violate uh, any rules on Twitter, uh, simply because it's blasphemy, simply because this is a Hindu goddess, right? And this is not even an insult towards um, Kelly. It's actually a very beautiful picture of her. So what we decided to do is we try, we decided to uh, show that there's no way for you to remove sexy Kali by minting a, her as an NFT on the Polygon blockchain, right? And the way it works is that people would buy it and then they would tweet about it using the hashtag sexy Kali. And then when they tweet about buying it, we would retweet it on Atheist Republic, which has like close to 100, 140,000 followers on Twitter. We would retweet it and that way they would be able to resell the nft the nfts that they bought okay and then again just to make sure that we don't accidentally scam anybody we told people that this probably won't work like this is like if you buy an nft uh, we're not telling you that you're gonna make money from buying and reselling it okay so we're not we weren't like we weren't one of these people who were saying like oh to the moon like buy it now and make a lot of money like we weren't saying that okay the main goal was to bring more attention to sexy Kelly and this and the whole situation of us being removed from Twitter and all the crap that we had to deal with just for simply for, uh, drawing a picture of um, a Hindu deity. Okay, that was the main intention, right? And to also have it minted on as an NFT on, on a blockchain to to make it immutable forever, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so when you actually post an NFT on the OpenSea marketplace of nfts um you don't actually it's not still minted right o it will only get minted when somebody comes and buys it for you because the buyer is also paying for the gas fee right uh, and because all 10 of them have now been bought from us that means that all 10 of them have now have been minted on the polygon blockchain right so people who bought them we we put the prices at as low as possible like we were selling them for two three dollars two three four five dollars so the main cost we people were paying was the gas fee right and they paid for so the the people who paid for this paid for the uh for the minting so they paid for the for them to be on the blockchain so thank you for everybody who did that and I, again even though we didn't promise this what i have to say is that all the people who bought it they managed to resell it 
for a higher price. Okay. So again, we didn't promise like you thought like some people are saying, oh, this is a scam. How is this a scam? How could this be a scam when we tell you that we're not telling you that you're going to make your money back? Okay. You might, you might not. We didn't say you will. So how is this a scam? Okay. We were just trying to get it minted on the uh, on a blockchain. Um, and I'm actually going to bring up some of the accusations. But even though we didn't promise that, every single person that has bought this the first after the at, the at the minting price managed to resell it at a higher price okay like look at the activity so if you go look at the activity look look, look at this one for example Woo, look at okay so yeah look the the trading activity on this just went on just went up right um so for example this one Yeah, so this person bought it from us at this price, so like five or six dollars, and then they sold it at this price, a much higher price. This is like I don't know how many times higher this is. Like so, people bought it at from us at like two or three dollars, and then they managed to resell it at like three hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars, like or prices like that. This is crazy. I didn't even know this is our first experience with blockchain selling, minting, and selling NFTs. And it worked out very well. Like I didn't, there's a lot of potential here. Oh, look, like this person sold it at $190. This person sold it at $40. This person sold it at, uh, sold it at $190. And they bought it from us. Look, they bought it from us from $4, $4, $3, $4, $3. And a lot of people who are now buying it at these higher prices, a lot of them are not selling it anymore. So if you actually go to all of the items, Right, so like we have, on, we only mint a ten. We're not going to mint any more than ten, right? Of of Cal, of Kalima. But if you go buy now, you go, you only see that only eight of six of them are available. So some people who are buying them, they're not even reselling them. Um, they're just making it. They're just holding on to it for some reason. I don't know why That's they my like Kelly. it so much. That's why I'm not going to sell it anymore. Okay, my so they Kelly. bought it for two. They're for two for close to two hundred dollars, and they just like keep holding on to it. So, so, but so only six of them are now available for sale. Okay. So yeah, if you want to buy it now, they're available, but they're not. Uh, we're not selling them anymore. Other people are selling it. I now I want to address uh, people who were like complaining about this and be like NFTs are bad and stuff like that. Okay. So let me bring that up. Oh yeah, guys, if you do own one of these Callies or if you bought one of these Callies, go to Twitter. Take a picture of the uh, of your NFT, tweet about it, and use the hashtag sexy Kelly so we could retweet it and help you resell it. Again, no guarantee, no guarantee that you're going to be able to resell it. Okay, so this is not a scam because we're telling you that it's not, it's not going to, um, it might not happen, right? But so, for example, like this person who bought it, he tweeted about it using the hashtag sexy Kelly. So, right. And he sold it right after he bought it. He sold it. This one I didn't retweet because this is not available for sell anymore. Look at this. Yeah, this person who bought this, I can't, I can't buy it anymore. I have to make an offer, so I'm not retweeting that one. But look at this person. This person's complaint. Okay, so we have a person who's saying, um, what? Some people complaining about us getting into NFTs. Uh, so Avery is saying, so after years of following Atheist Republic, I'll now say goodbye, not for the blasphemy, I'm all for that, but the eco and social effects of NFTs are something I and many are strongly against. It's your right to do as you wish, but it served only to sully you and my, sully you in my eyes, okay? So maybe this person should have actually watched the video that they're responding to, because we actually addressed that in the video. This was on the Polygon blockchain, okay? The Polygon blockchain is very environmentally friendly. It's a, it's a layer two solution. It's a layer two to Ethereum. It doesn't have, first of all, Ethereum itself is moving from proof of work to proof of stake. So Ethereum's uh, impact on the environment is going to be um, very small when they move towards that. But even now, we didn't use the Ethereum blockchain. We use the Polygon blockchain specifically for the fact that it has it's environmentally friendly. So you're full of crap, whoever you don't you haven't maybe watched you didn't even have to do your research. You could have just watched the video that we we talked about. By the way, as I mentioned, another advantage of being on the Polygon blockchain is that Kali is Indian and Polygon is a 
also a, <laughs> a blockchain that was founded in India. So that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's poetic, right? Um, let me see what other criticism they have. No, that was it. Yeah, on Facebook, a whole bunch of other people were also saying like, oh, what are you doing this? This is env environmentally not friendly and blah, 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 blah. Again, you don't know what you're talking about. The Polygon blockchain is very environmentally friendly. So there's that. Um, oh, just for full transparency, transparency um, just to be transparent, there is what you pay for when you trade it is a creator fee, which if that, that adds up to just 10%, and also a gas fee. The creator fee will be collected to make more art. The gas fee just goes into making the Polygon blockchain uh, more secure, I guess. It's a security fee, basically. The, uh, are, uh, what are people's views? Like, I want to make sure that I address because we we might like lean into this whole blockchain world and NFTs and everything, right? Because we work a lot of Atheist Republic's work is art, so we would, and also social media. Like, we we want to make sure that if blockchain provides us with platforms which are, you know less sensorial we are like we have our eyes open for that just to see what what platforms uh, the block you know this whole um web3 is going to provide for that so we're going to lean into that very heavily you know both because we're we have been victims of very heavy-handed censorship from traditional web 2.0 um, social media platforms. So that's why we would be very interested in alternatives if they come into the future. And also because we're heavily, our, our work is very closely related to art because of our blasphemy art, we are going to be very much leaning into anything, um, any solutions that the blockchain world could provide to us, right? But I wanna make sure that we are listening to our audience and we are, we're taking your feedback as long as it comes, it's an educated feedback. Like I want to make sure that like we like even we want to make sure that we don't accidentally start a scam, even if we didn't have an intention to start a scam. So we're going to be here and come and explain to you guys what we're doing. And we want you guys to criticize us if you think we're moving in the wrong direction. So for us to take your criticism seriously, us taking your criticism seriously doesn't mean that I'm not going to make fun of you when you say something stupid. Okay. So that doesn't mean like I'm not, I'm still going to do that. Right. But we will listen to what you have to say. Um, Beep Boop is saying Hindufa can buy them and stop selling them if they're clever. <laughs> I mean, sure. They could do that. I have a point. They can stop the proliferation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also, guys, by the way, um, when you also look at the environmental cost of a lot of these, uh, a lot of the blockchain, you have to compare it to the alternative. Um, like, the alternative a way of doing contracts and legal work and financial work requires office space, requires commute, requires manpower, requires keeping the lights on uh requires and the maintenance of all of that is more um costly to the environment both from the energy sp perspective and space and probably the space it takes and the pollution it co uh, costs even if you just focus on ethereum and, and bitcoin if they are taking away from that Technically, they are a net positive to the environment. They could potentially be a net positive to the environment, right? If you are replacing some traditional finance with, and these are all ifs, okay? I'm hoping, I'm, I don't know if, if any of this is going to happen or not. But if they could replace any of the legal framework that we have right now, if they could replace any of the financial framework that we have right now, uh, the cost to the environment of the traditional way of, uh, of way that we do finance and legal work is more and costly to the environment than this one, right? Especially, especially when Ethereum moves to proof of stake instead of proof of work, right? By the way, Polygon is already layer two, right? Polygon is already uh, proof of stake. So it's, there's no, so, so, so for example, blank name is saying, how is it environmentally friendly? Well, because you're not paying with energy, like for example, Bitcoin, when you're mining Bitcoin, the, the, the way that you have to pay for mining Bitcoin is with energy, right? You have to 
that's how right but when you have proof of stake you don't you don't use energy for mining okay you just use the co or coins that you already have as a way to mine new coins right so that doesn't cost energy so this method is environmentally friendly blank team is saying what is layer two layer two is basically so la layer so you have one blockchain that is providing you with the, all the security and all the main um um you know transparency and immutability and trustlessness that you need and you use that as a base and then you have another blockchain that is founded upon that blockchain and because you're already using a lot of resources that the layer one blockchain is using the layer two wouldn't have to redo all of that so that's why so the for example polygon is a block is a layer two blockchain built upon the ethereum blockchain so all, that's why the gas fees are so much lower that's why everything you do is a lot faster uh so you have all the security of ethereum but without all the costs but all uh, and all the speed of like something like solana or cardano but more secure because you because you're based upon ethereum anyways you could guys you guys could go watch videos in this i don't know if i want to spend I, I, if i'm the best person to explain all of this right um anything else people have i want to make sure we provide enough opportunity to, for people to criticize us for what we're doing because guys like nfts blockchain these are technologies okay um when people say they these are scams yeah they are a lot of them <laughs> right but they could be used a technology could be used for scam and it could be used for you know things that are not scams um given the original hype that a new technology has um 90 percent of it will end up be, more than 90 percent of it will end up being failures just like just like we went through the dot-com bubble with the internet right just like most of what was introduced originally when the internet was introduced as a new technology end up being pure hype and a lot of scams right a lot of people lost their money a lot of it was like promises that was never kept right uh, but that doesn't mean the te underlying technology is completely useless, right? The internet can be used uh, for scams, but um, eventually when the original hype dies out, it will find its um, actual use case, uh, it's, um, and that will survive. The underlying technology is more likely to survive and f be a lot more useful than a lot of maybe useless things that the people are doing with blockchains and NFTs right now, right? Um, it's like being saying you know nfts are like paper right if somebody draws something useless as a piece of paper you can't be against the technology that is paper paper is still a great technology that was invented right but you could use it for something useless or you could use it for something very useful um these are the blockchain and nfts are right now solutions that are looking for a problem um and they're very eager to look for problems that they are the solutions to and because of the desperation, a lot of times they are going to find things that didn't even need the solution. But this is exactly when the internet was, when it first was introduced to the world, right? This is exactly what smartphones were. People were making fun of, like, oh my God, I thought phones, like, I need phones to call people. Why is this doing the things? Like, is this a phone anymore? Is it like a camera? Is it a calculator? People were making fun of that. People were making fun of inter the internet. Again, I'm not saying that the blockchain is going to be as relevant as the internet, but it might. Um, it might. I'm just saying um, the scams that exist doesn't dismiss the fact that these the technologies will have the use case. Again, you have something that is immutable, that is transparent, that is um, uh, that is trustless. If you have anything like that, even if it was not the blockchain, is like it's weird for me to for you to think that that doesn't have any use, right? If you have a network where you could just put things on. If you have like a ledger that you could just put things on and everybody could see and nobody can change, okay? I don't know what people are using it for right now, but if you claim that that has no use case, then you're out of your mind, okay? Imagine if you, if you had the magic powers to just write something on the sky, okay? And everything you write on the sky, everybody would see always and nobody could change that, okay? You might write, you might like, okay, what am I going to do? You might draw a dick pic and people are going to be like, okay, that's ridiculous. What, why, why are you doing that? Okay. In the sky. But just because that's ridiculous, that doesn't mean that we can't find an amazing use case for all of, for this ability right now. Okay. This is an ability that we have right now. And I'm pretty sure you could use it for something amazing. 
maybe we're maybe we're not right now, but at some point we will. Richard is like right, like Richard is like I love how Susie is just zoning out right now. <laughs> yeah, she's I'm really listening. Like, <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. This is just what maybe like I'm you're very knowledgeable about, so I'm just gonna let you go for it. <laughs> Why would I interrupt? All right. So congratulations, Armin, on a very successful NFT launch. This was your idea and it really took off yeah. a lot better than you even anticipated. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually expect that. This is our first experiment. We're just doing trial and error. I just want to make sure we do this right because right now a lot of people are sensitive about this. So I want to start small and then listen to you guys and see if you guys have an issue with it or you think we're going the wrong way and then adjust accordingly. I just want to make sure we don't get into this um, you know, jump in and all of a sudden do something that we regret. Fair enough. Hmm. All right, guys. Yeah, guys, I'm saying people are paying attention more to Susie while Armin is talking. Yeah, yeah. People are like, okay. All right. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Anyways, I'll, um, it worked for people. So as long as it works, we'll see what we could do next with this. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.